Brands are definite assets in every business portfolio. And it's important for businesses to know that their brands are those assets that help to drive revenue. And that revenue itself will definitely reflect on the bottom line. And that bottom line itself will help to guarantee not just employment, but certainly revenues for the government. This is Business Matters, where business truly matters. My name is Stephen Ipalabo Lawson, your host. You're welcome. Brands in the digital age will definitely face challenges. How they respond to a lot of these challenges will determine how successful their products as well as their relevance in the market will be. And this is why it's important that data is one of the major sources of information to help you concisely make sure you create a strategy that can help your business strive. Let us have our business update. Hey beautiful, your eyes, your smile are all begging me to take you home tonight. Now reading page three. <laughs> Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. Like it's our tradition on Business Matters, where we invite a professional who is distinguished in their career to help us understand the topic of the day that we are looking at. And today we have a professional in-house that is going to help us understand what exactly brands are, especially in our today's digital age. Please, let us have our professional segment. Thank you for staying tuned on Business Matters here on NTA, Africa's largest um, television platform. As you are very much aware, on Business Matters, we explore the professional who definitely has distinguished himself or herself in their chosen field. And joining me in the studio today is no other person than the current um, CEO and lead consultant um, for Lady Bird Limited. And she has a distinguished career that is spanning over 30 years in integrated marketing communications a 2019 council member of the Moshuda Biola University of Science and Technology in Ogun State, as well as a member of the Media Communication Division for the Professor Yemi Oshibajo um, Support Group, and that will happen between the years of um, 2018 and 2019. She is also the past president of Association Advertising Agencies of Nigeria and an Advertising Practitioner Council of Nigeria, APCON, and a WIMBIS Council member. She's the delegate of 2014 National Conference and a multiple award-winning APCON fellow. She's a woman that I hold in very high regard. And to help us explore the topic, building brands in the digital age, is no other person than Mrs. Bumi Oke. How are you, ma? Very well, thank okay, you. Okay, okay. You're right. You're oh, right. Great. I'm okay. Bumi Oke is okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> it, interesting enough, I, I know that we are in the COVID era. Uh, whether we like it or not, it's going to be here with, uh, with us for the next two, three years, more or less. Yes. And so it has redefined um, the different ways we engage ourselves. 
as a matter of fact, before you walked into the studio, um, you were in a Zoom um, meeting or training. Yeah. Uh, and that itself is the, is the reality that yeah. we find with us. But how have you coped with, with the, some of the challenges? Well, thank you very much for having me, and uh, thanks to be back to the NTA family. Well, one thing I would say is that um, the post-COVID era has taught us one thing. Everybody, no matter your age, your background, <laughs> your phonetics, or you're not speaking English, or whatever language you speak, you have to be digitally savvy. Because everybody had to move online to market their brands, to market their goods, have conferences, have meetings. So even having family meetings have been a lot of, especially those of us who have children, both uh, in the diaspora and around, you find that you have no choice but to get onto platforms that will help you to achieve your goals. And so the digital world has brought about the fact that everything now is online. You know, it's that challenging, I, I would say, you know. And challenges make champions. That's true. So That's I true. think mm. it's going to make you a champion of Nigeria, if we can get it right. Because look at the students who never had access to um, other forms of learning have been forced even our state governments have been forced to go online. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually a good thing, though it came out of a bit of a, I wouldn't say a tragedy, out of a pandemic. You know, something good came out of the challenge because our children were really lagging behind, especially that's in true. public schools. But I think now everybody realizes that you don't necessarily have to have a smart pocket to have a smartphone, mm. you know? Mm. So mm. I think there are good things coming out of it. And I think it's, 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 it's a very, very dependable skill, especially in the age that we're in right now. This is the digital age. Whether we like it or not, nobody's going to be leveraging on, hankering on typewriter anymore to be able to <laughs> get a document. It's everything I like computer. that. I'm sure if you ask the, 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 the um, millennials, some of them don't even know what a typewriter My is, God, I can assure yeah. you. It's gone That's to the true. museum. That's true. Because you use the keyboards, yes. Keyboards are present on computers, but you don't use the typewriter itself. When you have, sure. we used to. <laughs> but I wanted to learn how to, to to type in those days. But maybe it's just as well. So I I need to become a secretary. I went on to achieve other things. You know that you need secretaries. There, everybody has their role. But I mean, obviously, God had other plans for me. So, Absolutely. but to your point, I think it's uh, a challenging, but um, a, 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 we're in a situation where COVID has made every business. Um, re-strategize. I found that a lot of my clients started re requiring online services like content management for their brands online. Absolutely. They wanted to see how could they do more photography so that they could use their pictures on Instagram. Uh, you know, see, the point is that how can you do videos that you can post online? Almost every communication that is being developed now also has to bear in mind that the platform for exposure is going to be a digital platform. So now digital you can actually, is, there's a cost, there's a cost uh, uh, management, so to speak, cost benefit, which the digital aspect that no, even the SMA. No, no, there, so there's a cost a, management because, because they're only skewed towards a limited number of people. You know, mm. with, the, with digital marketing and uh, digital services, you can actually program the number of people you want to meet. That's for true. example, if, I, if you have 10,000, you can advertise on, on, on a social media platform. That's you true. cannot advertise for 10,000 on a, on a network, uh, TV network, because your reach is not limited. It's called mass media for a reason. It mm. reaches at least 4 or 5 million people, 10 million people, even if you are doing it within a region. Digital media can be skewed to meet only 200,000, 20,000 people. So let's that's not misunderstand these things. That's and I think that's why I keep on uh, trying to explain as a professional that let's understand how mediums and media work. If you are going to, if I'll give an example. If I'm trying to meet 1 million people, if, for example, a telecoms company that has to advertise to the mass media, they will, I mean, and to a majority, you want to reach at least maybe 10 million customers, you cannot use only social media to do that mm. because it, right, when you look at the profile, your target audience may only spend maybe one or two minutes. In fact, you have ad blockers. So you find out you want to meet them in their consumer space. For example, they get up in the morning, they're walking on the road, so they see the billboard. They are going in a car, even if it's a bus, maybe the devil man even puts on the radio. So you pick him with the radio, and then he's passing in the reception. He comes to work in NTA. He sees the reception, he has to watch television by force. So the point I'm bringing out is that you're using the consumer pathway, we call it. What I mean is that it's a consumer pathway. Then by the evening, he goes to a restaurant and he's watching a cable. So that is how you do marketing for mass media, for mass-oriented products. Mm. But if it's a small product that is in a small place, I'll give you an example. I like to use the analogy of a plane a lot to explain marketing communications. You know, you have different price positions. You are going to Abuja, for example. True. And by God's grace, we all get there. But mm -hmm. some people will fly first, first class. class. Some will fly economy. Class, if, I, if not that they don't allow it, some people will go in baggage class. 
<laughs> but the, all excess we say is that you go according to your value proposition, how much you can afford. And don't forget, there's a different reach and there's a different service. But when everybody gets that, we're still back to normal. Everybody will still go through customs. That's true. The only thing, one might go ahead of you. But that's true. my point is, and they come up with a different experience. Mm. So that's the value proposition you offered. And they've paid more for it. But you might tell yourself, I'm going to, I don't need that level of value proposition. I just need an economy yeah. ticket to get me to where I'm going. And back, oh, I may even say, I'm only sending my, my goods by car, air cargo. I don't oh, even yes. need to go physically. Oh, physically. That's true. And that's the same thing with advertising and marketing. You've got to understand what is your value proposition? Who am I meeting? Who's my target? I, I know that you're, very, you're, you're, you're somebody who obviously is very passionate about integrating marketing communications. I mean, Thank you. The, the audience have, have perceived that. I've actually perceived <laughs> that. I've escaped so much Thank more. You. But I wouldn't want to let you go without us exploring some of those questions that we have in mind, amongst which this is. Um, a lot of people get the brand building uh, confused in the sense that they can't dist distinguish between what brand equity is, what brand strategy is, what brand positioning is. So perhaps we would like to tap into your wealth of um, knowledge to help us understand what exactly is the brand strategy and okay, what is different from all Thank that. you very much for that question. Let's start by saying what is a brand? A brand is a bundle of benefits. Mm. What makes a brand is the fact that you can identify it with certain propositions and benefits. So if you want to say, I want to drink tea. Tea is a generic word for tea, but somebody will say, I want to drink XYZ tea. So I don't want to market. Yes, XYZ tea, all right, for example. Or somebody says, No, I want TYX yeah. because it has, um, maybe it has a ginger flavor. That mm. is what they call product differentiation. Okay. So the point is, you have built enough brand equity, we call it. That means it's like saying you have enough knowledge of that brand, that brand. all its benefits, and you insist, I want XYZ tea. I just don't want any type of tea. So that's where your branding comes in because they now have brand is like a mark of distinction like the brand horses but brand is saying you're known for something all right they know that this brand is known for this so they buy that particular brand for that or a particular service say i want to go to xyz bank but there's a reason why one bank they all do the same thing they keep our money share it out make profits yes, keep thing, it safely basically. but they offer different value propositions someone say don't worry i'll turn around this just uh, two minutes. So you don't even have to leave the comfort of your home. Just use your digital. You know, they're all offering different services, but the same basic fundamental service. But they are differentiating and offering different value propositions. So the point I'm bringing out is that now, over time, when a brand becomes strong, they, are, they develop what they call brand equity. Brand equity means that I can take that to the bank. And let me use NTA. If someone says, oh, I'm going to NTA. Nobody says, where is that? That's true. NTA has a very strong brand, brand with, Yes, because we've been known. For However, in terms of its brand love, that is a different, different issue. Story. But okay. there are some people that they will do anything to, uh, to, 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 to watch NTA because they are actually in love with it. They say, I'm always, there's one particular program I like mm -hmm. to watch. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that is what has attracted them. So that's a negative tactic you use by bringing on this type of program to so keep the brand equity of NTA going. However, you may find that if you do a research with your competitors, you may find that you are, you are loved more in some areas than others. And that is where your uh, brand positioning comes in. How have you positioned? You say, well, we are for the masses. We are, for, we are not ever going to be a cable TV because our mandate is to make sure that every Nigerian, whatever they, whether they are educated, uneducated, can be enlightened on programs. So that is your value proposition. That's how you position But some will say, come on. We are a business, uh, we are a private sector TV station, TV station, and we have no apologies. We deal to only the business people. That's true. And therefore, if the person who can't read and write can't uh, watch our program, well, it's not really our target. Just like the <laughs> upper class passengers. All right, Mrs. Boom, I'm, I'm going to be yeah. pausing you for a while because we're going to go on a short break. As soon as we're back, <laughs> I will continue this conversation. And viewers, you can understand why I am just taking a back seat because this is a professional who has been distinguished Thank for a you. whole lot of time with, with an experience of over 30 years. You, you want to tap into that. But we're going to go on these short commercials. As soon as we're back, um, the conversation with Mrs. Bumioke continues. Thank you. <laughs> Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. 
All right, thank you. If you just joined us, I'm in the studio with uh, one of the women that I hold in very high regard, a woman that I admire so much because of her extensive experience in integrated marketing communications. No other person um, than Mrs. Bumi, okay? And we're speaking okay. on, okay, <laughs> pardon me, and we are exploring the topic, brand building in a digital age. Now, before we went on, on, on that break, uh, we looked at the question that I posed which had to do with brand equity, brand strategy, brand position, and all that. And I saw your passion with that because, as a matter of fact, I'm very sure my viewers have learned so much, especially for SMEs who are looking out to see how they can build a product, differentiate that product in the market, and see exactly how that can impact on, on, their, on their bottom line. But how far do you see the, um, the role of women, especially when it has to do also with issue of diversity? Uh, and how has that helped to improve the marketing communications industry? And what's the, the future hold, especially in that regard? Thank you for that question. Um, it's a very passionate and deep question because the reality is that the half of the world's population is men and women. In Nigeria, we have the same thing. We have about, uh, I think it's about 48% of um, actually male and 40, uh, like 52% women. So the point I'm bringing out is that when half of the world is influenced by women. Women also make household purchases. They make decisions. I'm sure your madam or your girlfriend, whichever the case may be, would have had some influence in your toothpaste, in some certain things. Even you are looking very smart. The point I'm bringing out, or your sister, or your mother, the point is that we're all influenced by each other, whether male or female. So one thing we have come to realize that, any, and it's proven in books and researches of women, that wherever you have women in businesses, all right, I'm not saying only women. But well, sure. a mixture of men and women. It has to be a balance. It's good, uh, because the good. world is balanced. It has to be God a balance. God that made the world balanced. That's the reason. You, you find that you are better off. You can have an all-men business, an all-women business. We're not saying that they will not work. Yeah. But you always have a great dynamism between men and women when you have a, a, an equal proportion of women and men on the board. The reason is that women and men think differently because we have different experiences. You, are, you are, and I may go out to the same meetings, but I can assure you, our thinking is different. We are thinking of the Absolutely. family, I think of the children. When a woman says, oh, there's no um, food in the house, the man is probably thinking, ah, how much money do I have? She's thinking of Gary and tomato, and yet you're saying the same question. She's not necessarily saying the money, because you don't always have to have money to have food. She can go to her garden and pluck some vegetables. But all the man thinks of first is that, oh, there's, <laughs> there's no food, okay, money, how much do I have, you know? It's for money, 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 money. So, and that, I'm not, one is a bit of a stereotype, I'm saying, but I'm just trying to put it in a light-hearted manner so we can get the fact that combining the thinking capacities of both men and women always bring about great uh, results. And I found that in advertising, it worked like magic. Some of us who had the opportunity to work in very big agencies at some point was because we had the dynamics of both men and women. If I got to a point when I was leading an agency in the past that a lot of the uh, industry heads started saying, if you have a woman in charge, maybe we should start putting women. And a lot of men started having opportunities, which means that if you perform That's true. And, and you get good results, others will be encouraged. And they soon found that the mixture actually worked. Now, the, the, the final question before we wrap up this session has to do with the issue of budget cost. Yes as the case is. How important is it, especially for small-scale businesses? Because one of the major focus of this program is actually to see how small, uh, medium, small, and uh, um, scale enterprises can actually tap insight to help them operate their own different businesses. Do I necessarily have to have a very big budget in order for me to be able to have a m major mind share of, for my products in the market space? You know, that's like you said. I like the I'll go back to my analogy of an aeroplane, okay? You, we all have a destination for our products, services, and businesses. If you want to go very far, and you want to be as big as the whole world, then you must know that you're, you've started on a big scale. But the advantage for SME is that you should start where you are. And when you start where you are, it means that you're starting small, and you scale up later. There's a principle that we want to make clear that whatever level you are starting on, you need to market your goods and services. The principle is usually you use 20% of your budget. So if, for example, you have a business that is worth $5 million, take 20% of that and use it to market. But you see, if you tell someone, eh, I should use $1 million to market my goods and services, create visibility. How you now use the $1 million can only be done properly by a creative person who will teach you that. Don't go and put everything and buy only one press and nobody's going to see you. And you can't compete with those who are spending $500 million budget on their campaigns because you are not in the same race. You know, you might be getting to the same destination which you want to get share of yeah. markets, 
But the, the certainly aeroplane, the, the aeroplane but certainly one is walking, going by the Sahara class, Desert, and one is class, exactly. Class. If you are going to be an SME and you want to compete in the market, and that's why you want your brand to also have a good reputation. You don't want your brand to be beat, uh, threadbare, and looking downtrodden because nobody's going to repeat that purchase. You want your brand to look healthy. But the journey in between, you shouldn't despise the days of humble beginnings. But the important thing is to understand that you need to be able to create a brand for yourself because when you do become big, how does the consumer make a choice and say, mm. no, I only want to see, I only want to tune into it. I have issues sometimes at home. I'll say, I want to watch this because uh, I like to listen to news. But that's because of differentiation, you know, and all that. So you can say, I want to go to this channel. Put me on this channel. I want to listen to this. Whereas someone say, I want to watch football. So it's the same thing with food. Some people say, some children insist, I want only this type of noodles. Mm -hmm. Some will say, ah, anyone goes. That's true. That's and true. you may insist even that you want a certain toothpaste. No, I'm enjoying this, and I'm very sure my producer will spare me a few moments <laughs> to actually ask you this particular question. Um, a lot of people feel that the fact that you are big, customer service is no longer um, of essence, so I can treat my customers as I choose. And I imagine for you, from your own experience, how important is customer service, even for the big brands as well as for the small brands? I think it's key, and I'll still go back to our airline experience. If you have a good airline that you know why I like the airlines is because fifty percent of the dif of what differentiates them is their service. Mm. We are all going because of aviation standards, safety. Certain things are standard. You cannot say you are going to eat okay. Across yes, across across. So let's assume that is taken, and that's what I'm trying to say about building your brand. Some fundamentals are there. So in doing that, the difference is the fact that you have to be able to, whether it's one customer or 100 customers, you need to treat them well. Whether I'm flying economy or I'm flying, because the person who is your economic co customer is your potential upper class customer tomorrow, I hope you know. And that's why the principle means that your small customer today will be your most loyal and may be your biggest customer and may be your biggest referral. In fact, in customer service, you may find that. Even if they can't afford a service, doesn't mean they cannot make a referral for you. Mm. So you have to make it on the fact that picture that point. that person is your upper class passenger. Treat the person economy like the upper class passenger. The best, even if they're not paying, because they'll remember you for it. I'll give an example. I had an example where once I was trying on a plane and my screen was not working. The way the lady went about, I was almost wondering that it's enough. She actually ended up, she was so, she, even if it was drama, it worked. She seemed so bothered. Oh, your screen is not working. That's why you pay. Blah, blah. Anyway, eventually, when I said it's okay, I was fine with my children, so I wasn't even too worried about it. And besides, I wasn't a movie fan. But she now went to, the, to give me a group of papers, which I love to read anyway. She didn't know. Gave me, me uh, papers and newspapers to sort of alleviate yes, the fact that. Yeah. And I never forgot that experience because I was so impressed that, mm. I mean, she just wanted to see what she could do to alleviate, to alleviate my comfort person. or make me more comfortable. more comfortable. And I was in economy at that point. So it wasn't as if maybe because she was just doing her job. And when you're nice to people too, people too are nice to you. Maybe because I was so polite, she also felt, what could she do? Who knows? Because you have to respect myself. You have to be polite in some situations. I'll be very humble. You know? So the All point right. I'm making out is that let's know that whichever level you are operating, your customer, customer is king understand. and there are potential kings of tomorrow too. All right. I, I, can't, I can't thank you enough, Ma, because I know if I had my way, I should have wanted this to extend to about <laughs> one, two, three hours because there's so much. We, we, and I hope thank that... You. um my producer will definitely consider having you again. Um, in the future, we'll be having some other engagement. We'll definitely have to enlist you. Thank you very much. To see how we can have some of those thoughts shared uh, to a larger, uh, larger, larger audience. Thank you very much, madam. It's been a great pleasure. And uh, God bless you so much. Thank you very much for having me. And it's been a pleasure to you. All right, viewers, <laughs> that's so much we can take on this segment. Please uh, stay tuned because uh, Business Matter continues after this moment. Brands are definite assets every company must never take for granted. How you are able to position those brands, especially in your marketing mix, can definitely help your business to be successful. And you must understand whether you are a big organization or you are an SME, definite customer service is a better way to go because as always, the customer is king. 
This is so much we can take on this week's edition of Business Matters. My name is Stephen Ipalbo Lawson. Please do well to follow us on all our social media handles and certainly explore our website. Until I come your way again, bye-bye for now. Business.